Hello everyone, this is Shibi John with you from IIT Kanyakuri branch. Today I'm here with you for a video specifically discussing about the relationship criteria for the speaking subtest. So let's understand the relationship criteria which is one of the important criteria used in speaking subtest. So let's see in what it is about. Okay. So the first point in relationship criteria, it consists of four sub-criterions, okay? So it's not only one thing which is uh, uh, given importance in relationship criteria. Unless you complete the four sub-criterion, then only your relationship sub-criteria or the relationship criteria is being covered. So we will be uh, stressing on those four sub-criteria that what it is and what it is about. So several students, they are uh, facing difficulty. They, and they, only assume, they assume that it's only about showing empathy during the patient uh, speaking with you. So if the patient says, uh, I'm having pain, so yes, oh, I can understand your pain. So they limit their relationship criteria to that level only. So let's understand what else is there in relationship criteria. Okay, it says, Relationship criteria having four sub-criteria, which are initiating the interaction appropriately. So the first sub-criteria says how you initiate the interaction with the patient. So it's greeting your patient in a friendly, confident, and welcoming manner to establish rapport. So it's how well you introduce yourself and get the introduction or the information from the patient initially when you meet the patient. So the examples are, hello, my name is Dash Dash or my name is Shibi John. I'm one of the registered nurses working in this facility or this hospital. So that's uh, a sentence which is uh, used by every person or every OAT student in uh, speaking subtest. But there, there are several simple sentences which you can use to introduce yourself, which is, Hello, my name is Shibi John, and I will be your attending nurse today. So a short single sentence can be also used instead of that for instant nurses. Hello, my name is Shibi John, and I will be looking after you today. So it's very simple sentence which you can uh, speak to uh, a patient, and it will be helpful for the patient to easily understand what it is, because the Patient doesn't want to know that are you registered or you're not registered. He just or he, she, uh, she just wants to know that which is the nurse or which nurse is going to help me today or is this nurse specifically assigned for me today or not. It's demonstrating an attentive and respectful attitude. So whenever this patient is uh, discussing anything or uh, telling you the concern, how attentive you are in listening and are you respecting the patient's attitude or the statements which they have made? So seeking patient's permission or consent before asking question or moving ahead during the consultation. So whenever you do any question session with the patient, you should be giving a heading to that. So it can be like, can I start the questions about your lifestyle before discussing treatment options. So here you are asking a consent from the patient. You are not directly asking a question that what tell me, can you tell me about your lifestyle or uh, what do you have in your breakfast. So instead of starting that directly, you need to ask a consent, you need to go for a consent or you need to ask a permission from the patient so that we are you, uh, uh, can you start the question session or not. If the patient says yes, then you can go ahead with the questions. So you should be always asking the patient's consent before moving or, or before jumping on to the questions or the list of the questions you are going to ask to the patient. And be sensitive to the patient when talking about embarrassing moments. So there are several embarrassing moments when the patient will not be willing to share the details. Or if you're asking in a normal tone that, can you please tell me about your sexual lifestyle or sexual things? 
so the patient might not be happy to or he might be hesitating to share his details or her details right so you need to ask in a polite way and be asking in a sensitive manner so let's see what are the same examples I have listed down for your information now like for attentive and uh, respectful so can I start with the question about your lifestyle may I ask so you are asking may I ask you some questions about your family history is it okay if I ask you some questions some question about your lifestyle and if it's a sensitive topic you can also ask I have to ask you some personal question if that's okay if you don't mind I would like to ask some questions about your sexual history so here you are uh, asking in a very polite and a sensitive uh, you are understanding the scenario and in that manner you're asking the question so keep in your mind these are the sample questions which you can ask but keep in your mind whenever you ask any question you should be attentive and respecting the patient's attitude moving ahead the third one adopting a non-judgmental approach so it's again one of the important uh, sub criteria so you should not be judging the patient or you should not be judging uh, uh, your statement should not be judgmental all right so being accepting and respectful towards patient's views and m avoid making any judgmental comments or statement so you should not be directly judging the patient if the patient uh, uh, sm uh, smokes a lot of cigarette in a day so you should not be judging uh, it's a bad guy or uh, he's is uh, a chain smoker so you any statement whatever you speak to uh, the patient it should not be a judgmental one so let's see the example one you seem disturbed how are you feeling today so you already know the patient is disturbed so you are not telling uh, you are disturbed right so what uh, what's uh, how you are feeling today you are disturbed no you told you should be you seem so it seems so you, it seems means it's not confirmed right it's just the outer look what you got so it seems so you seem to disturb right you seem disturbed and how you how are you feeling so then you are asking again being non-judgmental I can see that you are concerned so I can see that so you are not giving a hundred percent surety I can see that you are concerned could you tell me more about it so you need to get more information to understand what it is so in order to understand what it is so can you please tell me more about it all right so the third of uh, the third example which is says that I understand how difficult that must be let's focus on what we can do now to improve your health so you understand how difficult that must be all right and let's focus so you are being non-judgmental in your all statement when you're whenever you're speaking to the patient so let's move to the last one which is show empathy for feeling predicament emotional state so this is a familiar one usually all students use that to how uh, they can show the empathy right whatever how they understand the concern or the feeling of the patient few examples I understand how you are feeling so the patient you are understanding the feelings of the patient I do understand your perspective if I were you I would react in the same way so now you are putting yourself in the patient's shoe that you are understanding the same man in the same manner how the patient is having the pain or the, how the patient's uh, patient is feeling so you're understanding the same pain and you understand the, the concern by this statement I understand it is challenging for you to cope up with this situation and it is reasonable reaction so here you're understanding how a challenging situation it is for the patient and it is also a reasonable reaction so it is not something which is not accepted so it is acceptable because it's a uh, reasonable reaction is with the reasons valid reasons so these are the few examples when you can how you can use this to uh, introduce the empathy feel empathy for the feeling in 
relationship building criteria. So we have completed the all four sub criteria which is under the relationship building criteria. So I hope you are able to understand the relationship criteria properly this time and I would I um, this video might be helpful for you to improve your speaking skills for the OET subtest. So this is what we try to explain our students, especially in our uh, IELT uh, Kanjikuri branch, which is the premium hub of uh, the, our institute. So we stress each criteria. We stress on the each criteria. Make the students understand what each criteria wants you to. Right? So it's important that how these criteria are being used when you are doing your task. So if a role play is given, it's not important that how quickly you, uh, you finished your task properly. It's important that while doing your task, were all the criteria being covered or not? Are the all criteria properly used when you were delivering your task? So, best of luck for your OET preparation and I hope I was able to help you with some knowledge which was uh, informative for you. Thank you very much.